Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Wow, we're already in mid-July and here we are at the end, coming to an end of July. I like, hi Coco John, how are you? It's so good to have you here. Well, uh, it's hot. It's hot in LA. It's hot in my office. It's hot everywhere. Hello, Claudia. How are you? Hello, Lisa. Um, it, it, it's so great. It's so great to have you all in here. Today is uh, what they just told us is full moon. So I have no idea. Do you believe in the effects of full moon on you, on your behavior? Uh, does it affect your mood? Does it? Um, hello, Jana. Hello, Christine. Hello, Adrian. So good to have you all. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Claudia Flores. How are you? Yes. So my question today is, does full moon affect you? Well, I've got to tell you something. Starting yesterday, I've had one uh, stress after another, uh, one disastrous things that have been happening packing one on top of another. And then here I am, Mrs. Stress Management. And it's like, how do I cope with something like this? And it's just realizing that what happened, it's outside of my, my control. Uh, the elevator in our condominium has stopped due to mismanagement of something else. So being on the board, I was responsible to make few calls and take care of it. And uh, there are the tenants that we have to take care of because of the heat and earthquakes and everything. So we want to make sure that everyone is safe. And with all that, there's something else happening. The computer not functioning right. And <laughs> here I am. Is it full moon? So my question to you is, does it affect health? Oh, thank you so much, Claudia. Um, so, does it affect us? Or do we use certain things in life as an excuse to um, say, it's not about me, it's because of this. Uh, I'm not going to take responsibility because of that. So, what in our behavior, in our uh, in our habits or behaviors is in our control. So hello again. For those of you who do not know me, I am Lisa Bubari, your expert hypnotherapist, motivational speaker, and your Hill Talk Tuesday informative. Um, I like to bring information. I like to bring solutions. And the name of my business is Heal Within, where transformation begins. So if we were to listen to our body, how do we cope with those stressors, with the anxieties, things that are not in our control, but it affects us. So the moon can affect us, what our kids do affect us, what our parents say or do affect us, right? So everything from the outside can have an effect on us. But I like to say how we respond to those is more important. How we uh, get off the handle is more important. How certain things we do or say is more important than what happens because we truly are in our control. And Christine says, only if you let it, the full moon is beautiful and illuminates. Every day brings challenges. It's all about how we respond. Amen. Exactly, Christine. Um, that's what I like to say. Everything in life, how we deal with it is more important. So let me give you an example. Yesterday, I had a client who came in with severe, severe pain. Uh, physical pain. She's been having severe pain in her body for the last uh, seven, eight months to the point that one thing after another is breaking down in her body to a point that she's got uh, extreme headaches, vertigo, the body is in pain. She, uh, 
she they thought it was fibromyalgia, but it they ruled that out. They ruled out everything uh, Western medicine could do because for the last three, four months, she's been going from one doctor to another, MRIs, tests, and everything. And someone said, go to a massage uh, place and the massage therapist, one of those foot massage places. And I've been telling you all this time, be aware of who you go to and what they are doing. So what they did to her, it, you know, unfortunately, this is not everywhere, but they pulled and tagged on her and tore a small little ligament. And then, so that add, added onto her stressors, that added to her injuries or her pain. So she was exasperated. When she came in, she couldn't even fill out the form. My assistant had to help her fill out the form because she could not write well. She came in here with tears in her eyes saying that she could not handle the pain. Sorry. Uh, so, I go back. Ah. Uh, stopping interruption right i even forgot to stop my own phone so she came in with tears and within five minutes she was like i can't sit i'm in pain i can't do this i am in pain i can't remember this I, i'm in pain this has been going on so by calming her to a point where I just sat and I said, you can walk out anytime, but share with me, share with me, how long has this been? And if I were to ask you, if you could go back to another time and a place. So what I did is I helped her find this office, a small safe place where the only thing that mattered was her and I, nothing else. And within 10 minutes, she let go of thinking about massaging her hand. And within a few moments, she was relaxed enough to sit in the recliner. Within an hour and a half later, as she was leaving, we had gone all the way back to certain times in her life where in the beginning she was so frustrated she couldn't remember anything from her childhood and it was anger and there was full of resentment to a little girl holding her grandfather's hand to a point that when grandfather had passed away all she could remember this little girl of five year old is holding grandpa's hand and not realizing why she could not hold grandpa's hand and there was a room filled with women sitting crying hitting pulling their hair and nothing and no one was telling her what's going on and so with their screams she starts screaming as they scream this little girl screamed and all she could remember was screaming and dark and black and they told her that something awful had happened but no one explained to her so why am i saying this i want you to know that certain triggers certain traumas that happen in our life you know uh, our parents um when we uh, it, it's not that finding fault or blaming someone, blaming the moon or blaming parents, blaming family. It's not, but it's evoking. When I talk about my method, the 3E method of evoking what was is to evoke a trigger, evoke a timeline that we can connect to that makes sense to what is happening now in order for us to begin the healing process. We cannot heal something if we don't know. So what I like to call, just like this light that is shining upon my face, is creating and turning that light bulb on 
that switch goes on and we go, ah, so that ah is a trigger. It's a starting point. Not everything starts as a childhood. It can be teenage years. It can be college years. It can be just any other time. But there is a starting point. So the moment she remembered that, it was, what other time do you remember? Do you remember having this kind of an emotion? Boom, when she was 11 years old. The next one, when she was 17, boom, another trigger to a point that once we evoke emotions, and I want you to think of the same thing, that if there is something within you that it's hindrance, if it is a hindrance, if it is a habit that it's not welcome, if it is something that you want to shift and heal or change, right? It is time for you to have that aha moment and find the trigger just by turning that switch on. And it's sometimes easier to close your eyes and just allow all things come and go and nothing really matters. A part of guided visualization, a part of hypnosis, it's not to hypnotize you for you to quack like a duck or bark like a dog or do uh, sing like a Madonna or anything like that. This is not stage hypnosis that I do, but clinical therapy is a part of what I do is tap into the subconscious mind where it holds all information from the day we were born until now. It is the reservoir of what I call it, the encyclopedia of our mind. Everything from the day we are born until this very moment, right here, right now, as you are looking at me. And if you are live with me right here, just show me with an emoji or say something. Hello, Lilia. Hello, Patty Sajun. How are you? It's so good to have you here. So if you are live, just say yes, thumbs up, number one. And if it is a repeat, you can just go hashtag repeat. And if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to respond. So back to shifting, back to our subconscious mind. Yes, we can make changes by using affirmations, by repeating over and over, over, over. Thank you, Paris Ajun. Uh, yet our subconscious mind is the core reservoir that every aspect of it, emotion, when it is in affirmation, with passion, with choice, and an emotion connected to it, an emotive, a emotion, an emotion of passion, suggestion, choice, desire, and movement, all of it connected to it. That's when, that's what we say, if you want to make a change, right? It is tapping into the subconscious where the subconscious will do everything. So it's not what you say, it's what we feed our subconscious and uh, the belief system that we have. It's to shift the belief system. It is shifting the blueprint, the patterns that we have. And once the blueprint is shifted, which is the subconscious mind responds to your uh, conscious choices and desires, and it will do everything in order to help you, safeguard you, and do something for you. You see, the subconscious mind is there only and to protect us, to safeguard us, and to keep. See, our brain is to do things when we go into autopilot. Our subconscious will do everything to make us comfortable so that when we do things, it feels good for us. When we want to shift the behavior and get out of that autopilot, we want it wants to revert back until there is an emotion, 
the reward is far greater or the pain is so bad and excruciating that we say, I no longer want this. And then what we, uh, what our conscious mind perceives is what our subconscious mind will conceive. Yes. And it will give back to us. So by evoking and light bulb and we go that aha moment, it's time to embrace it. So instead of negating it, instead of saying, oh my God, why that happened? It was so bad. It was instead of punishing what happened or the people who did, it's saying, wow, now I get it. Now I understand why certain things in life shaped me to who I am, the things that I do, the way I behave, and how wonderful it is for me to recognize it. And now I get to see, I get to recognize, now I get to like me for who I am. And then, if it is something you no longer like and you want to change, that's when we say, what is my next step? What do I want in life? Not what we don't want, but what is it that I want? What is it that I desire? What excites me? What brings me that passion? And that is what I want in my life now. So if it was for her to let go, and she was like, I want to get rid of this pain. I want to get rid of this pain. I can't stand this pain. I can't live. I can't have life. I can't be angry. And I said, that's true. You can't. But as long as you are stuck in the I can't, there is no way that you can. Again, as long as we are stuck in the I can't, which means I am helpless, that means you're not giving yourself permission to, I can. And it was, what? So, recognizing how our words become so powerful that the words that we utter, the words that we use, become engraved and embedded in our mind. And as long as I say, I can't, therefore, I can't. I'm helpless, right? It's like when I get stuck with my computer, I call my assistant, literally. I love Adrienne. She's my Alexa. And it's like, Adrienne! And or else I get flustered. I get anxious because I really do. I'm not a ticky person. I say I am not a ticky person. But if she was not here, I'm sure I would find a way to make it work. I can turn around and get flustered and say, I can't handle this. Yes, two minutes later, if I have no one, I guarantee you I will find a way. Why? Because at 12 noon, I have to come live. Because I have given a word, taken responsibility, and made a choice to show up, to show up at 12 noon every single Tuesday, no matter where I am. Now, come high horse or whatever, sometimes I'm three minutes away, sometimes I'm two minutes uh, late, but I do show up. And because of that, I will figure out somewhere, somehow to show up for you. So that in itself says, when we think I can't, in a way we are saying, I can't. No. How about, what if you shift and do the same thing? Because when you think about, I can't, and you say, am I really helpless? Or can I find a way to do it? Can I find another way to come up with an answer? Because there are many ways for us to come to the same answer. You see, when I think about doing the calculation uh, or multiplication, 
I, before I even pick up the calculator to do it, I do the multiplication in my head, like six times six. And right before I come up with the answer, this is how my brain goes into how fast and as fast as I come to give the answer, my brain goes, she, 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 36. So what happened here? Some of you got it. Some of you don't. Hi, how are you, Mark? She, 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 is in Farsi. That means six times six, 36. Being born in Iran, uh, I am Iranian, Armenian, Armenian, Iranian, being born in the country of Iran. For some of you who do not know, I was born in Tehran, Iran. And when I was 14 years old, I came to the United States. And that's many, many years ago. I consider myself an American. But because of my blueprint and how I was educated and how I remember the multiplication, and that is embedded in my subconscious, my multiplication is in Farsi. Not even Armenian, which is my uh, main language. I learned my multiplication in that language. So when I want to do that, right away my brain goes into uh, so solution mode and the solution comes in Farsi and then I translate it to English or in Armenian and then I give the answer. And that's how fast this incredible mind of us functions. So for those of us who learn things as a child, as children, that take information from our parents, from teachers, from our siblings, from our grandparents, from our environment, from the cold and the heat and everything, even the food we nourish, our body, our mind learns what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad. So today, there are patterns that since I was young, uh, even in our family, we grow up, we don't understand it until we come and become older and we realize there are certain things, traditions, certain behaviors, certain patterns in the family and the way they speak is not conducive to the way we want to live today. It, their way of upbringing is not like today. And it doesn't mean that we are going to wrong them, but it doesn't mean we have to abide by those traditions and those rules to be happy today. So that in itself is knowing how to handle and honor yourself. By the time my client left, I'm going to ask you the same question today. You know, when we get married, in general, I don't mean it for everybody, but when two people stand in front of God, in front of an altar, in front of witnesses, and it can be in front of a clerk. I don't care where it is. But when two people come together and they say, from this day forward, I promise to honor. I promise to safeguard you. I promise to obey. I promise to do this. You know, all these promises that we do, in front of the witnesses and everyone, but we do it for one another. When was the last time you stood in front of the mirror and made those promises to you? To obey you, to honor and safeguard you, right? When was the last time you chose you to love and cherish till your death does you a part. We don't. 
And before we are fully and completely complete with ourselves, we stand in front of everyone or in front of a camera or in front of another person. It doesn't matter if it is a man or a woman. And we say, I promise to do this for you. And we haven't even done that for ourselves. And this incredible client of mine had forgotten to hold her own hand, the hand of that little girl, to safeguard her and connect with her to her childhood and say, it's okay. And all these years, not realizing that she was still suffering from the death of her grandfather and never truly giving herself permission to come out of that screaming darkness, right? And after a while, at age nine, her family, because she was constantly crying, they didn't understand. They think that she is depressed and then they take her worse than anything to a mental hospital for another mental doctor to take care of her and they said she is depressed and then of course medicine after medication medication after the medication and by the time we come to be an adult at age 34 she still didn't realize it so in one session and i'm not saying this is a cure but it is paying full loving attention to you, saying I do to me, saying I do to honor and appreciate and to love yourself, to love all of you. And it doesn't matter what the labels are. It's okay for you to have an understanding, but then it's peeling away those band-aids, layers and layers of band-aids of that stress, anxiety, labels of uh, I am depressed, labels of I am mentally retarded. <sighs> really? Some do need it. But for you to start loving all the layers and peeling away, that's where you say I do. So that's how we evolve. Evolving comes from turning the light bulb embracing all of you and it doesn't matter if we are sane insane if we are overweight you know i work with emotional eating i work with people who have done all kinds of dieting and yo-yos and they believe i can't lose weight and i show them the way that they can they can tap and see how they can, instead of eating, realize that sometimes the best thing is to empower your self-esteem instead of eating away with negativity, eating away at our self-esteem with negative talk, and perceptions so my question is to you how often can you turn I can't to I can and instead of things that have been eating at you you turn around and say I become more loving I validate and appreciate and accept myself for who I am today because I do matter. I matter as a human being. I matter as a man, as a woman. I matter, I matter as a child to my parents, but today I am this incredible individual because from the moment they cut our umbilical cord, we become this incredible individual and we forget Sometimes they don't even let us remember that we are an individual.
because they want to safeguard us. It's not that they did wrong. It's just they didn't know any better. And today, you can say, I can. So here is, I use all kinds of metaphors. I hope this resonated. Yes, Mark. Yes, you do matter. So let me see if there's any questions in here that I can answer. Is there anything I can answer? Is there anything that if it is not clear for you, if it is about hypnosis, which is tapping into the reservoir, your subconscious mind, just by changing and shifting my word, there is no sleep. Um, yes, there are ways of that we can do rapid induction and I can do uh, progressive induction, which is close your eyes. And as I guide them into this beautiful state of relaxation to a point that nothing really matters, even though they can hear everything from the outside, the cars, the sounds, the music playing in the background, even the sound of the AC, everything. We are surrounded with all of this. And sometimes we are just numb with everything that's around us. And yet when we go into hypnosis, it's this pure, utter awakeness and awareness, awareness even to the tip of every single one of our nails. Yeah? The way we swallow our saliva. And when we swallow it, we're taking oxygen and vitality in. And it's just pure connection. Even releasing pain inside the body, we can shift that and do that. So it's all this magnificent things. That's why I love this work. So if there is any question, if there's anything, I like to say, listen to your body, listen to yourself and appreciate. Appreciate the pain that is knocking on your body and saying, pay attention to me. If there is a behavior that you no longer want, tapping with a pain with a, a sharpness or something pay attention you don't have to come to me you can meditate you can do self-hypnosis i've got lots and lots of uh cds uh, recordings with my voice on my website that you can go to healwithin.com and go to a shop. If there is anything, information that you want, it's right there for you. For cancer patients, I've got a DVD for not only for cancer patients, but even their caregivers. They need some time out. They need relaxation. They too need some time. Because it's not only for the person who is suffering, but the people who also are taking care of the person. You see, we want to take pain away. But we can't take your pain away. I can't. I really cannot take your pain away. But what I can do through my techniques, through my expertise, is help you reduce your pain. I have no right to take your pain away. It's yours. The same way as you cannot take my pain away, and it doesn't matter if it is emotional, physical, or my stressor, or the disasters that it's happening, anywhere. We cannot take that away. But what we can do is help raise a helping hand, create a space for those who need, and if you have the expertise and the means to it, help them in one form or another. Some can help with money, some can help with expertise, and some can help just by sitting and listening. That's it. Especially when we we don't always want a solution. We just want someone to connect with and listen. And for those who go into fixed mode, 
love you. The best fixing sometimes is to sit and hold space. And I'm talking to you that sometimes you have to do the same thing in front of the mirror. Instead of taking the action, just sit. It doesn't even have to be a mirror. Close your eyes. And believe it or not, your answers are within you. That's where healing begins. That's exactly where transformation starts. Thank you. Yes, you do need to take good care of your body because this is what houses us. And who we are is not the body, but we are within our body. And our body is just a shield and protects us. In our subconscious, our mind, the incredible sound mind of us is there. So have your own back. And then find a community that supports your back. So if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to take. Hello, Sartig. How are you? Hello, all of you for being here. Hi, Carol and John. Um, today's message was care for you, uh, change uh, patterns, and realize that from this day forward, you can and you are not helpless and you can always ask for help do ask for help and it's okay to ask for help as a matter of fact i give you permission to ask for help when you need it and say i'm here for you and hold space for someone else that wants your help and last thing for those who constantly ask for your help no is an okay answer. So you see, there's all kinds of permission you can give to yourself. Asking for help, giving help, and saying no, depending on where you are in life and what you have done and what you need to do to safeguard, appreciate, and love you. So say I do to you because you do matter. In closing, as a reminder, evoke what was, embrace what is, the reality, and evolve to what will be, your desire, what excites you, and what you want to create in life. May God bless you, and the universal light be with you. Until next week, I am here for you and i will answer all the questions you present oh good job mark yes you do to you god bless until next week bye, -bye.